I'm Matt Nesto, Editor-in-Chief of Payments.com. Glad to be joined today by Brett Nollinger. He's the Global Head of Commerce at Black Hawk Network out in Denver. Is it right? It's Denver? Yep. Okay, good. So, um, Brett, we're, you know, it's, uh, it's Christmas in August, as they say. The, the retail industry is looking, of course, into the holiday season, as is Black Hawk. So, what, what's this whole notion of unlocking currency? I mean, I know there's a lot of stored value in cards, and we'll get to that. But t- tell me, you know, from your point of view, wh- what's going on uh, new right now with unlocking this money? Yeah, no, th- thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. So, look, I, it's funny. Um, in preparation for this, I was just looking at my own life today, and I was talking to a few folks and a few friends and colleagues, and we were talking about where, where do we have these pockets of funds Um, that have now created this digital experience where we're seeing more and more use of cell phones. We're seeing more unique loyalty programs, gifting solutions, prepaid, you know, this multitude of, you know, once upon a time you had your bank, your bank account, your card, you used it and that's what you did. Now you've got these multiple facets of spend and programs, et cetera, that are out there. And what it's allowing to happen is this value, this trapped value starting to build and then predominantly on your phone where you could see points and whether it's miles and loyalty or whether it's P2P is another great example where we're seeing money show up in P2P and you see this use case where it's moving back and forth. Well, all in all, you know, I was sitting there going through my own experience and I've, I've got thousands of loyalty points, a bunch of miles, and I've got hundreds of dollars that are sitting there inside of these P2P accounts as well as just loyalty points that are being turned into, you know, points and currency inside of my wallets. And, and then the question is, what do you do with them? And, and yeah. so how do we convert that into something that can be used for everyday spend? And, and it's funny when I, I, I pulled some folks out there and family and friends and colleagues, every one of them said the same thing. It's amazing to see how much wealth is being created onto our phone that we're not able to use, whether it's digital or yeah. in the physical environment. We just aren't there yet. So, I mean, it's, it's millions of dollars that's uh, locked up. What, what are you guys doing to, you know, unlock it, to make it easier to, I, I don't know, corral all those little touch points of, of cash? Some of them might be minuscule. Some of them might be meaningful. Some of them no, are I, unknown. Yeah, and I think it's actually, the, the last report we saw was close to $5 billion in this untrapped value. Um, it's an, it's an amazing number. And you've got, of course, no surprise, almost nine out of 10 people are looking to be able to take those, put them into something where it can actually use it. We were sitting there saying, how do I go to the store and be able to do that? So what we're thinking and what we've been creating and a lot of the work we've been doing, especially around our pay for it suite is how do we use things that people have every day? So we know we have trap currency. We know that we have a cell phone. And through the, through the pandemic, one of the things that I, I believe is a win and something we'll look back and recognize that people are starting to utilize more than ever, and it's very simple, is the concept of a QR code and this, the concept of a barcode. And how do we take a currency, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's loyalty points or air miles or trapped you to pee money, and be able to turn that, do a currency conversion, put that into the form of a QR code and allow that to be used at the point of sale at retail or be used online using uh, you know, digital experiences. How do we take that QR code, be able to show that to the point of sale? By the way, the great news is virtually every retailer out there is able to read a phone now, able to read a barcode, able to read a QR code and be able to take that and be able to buy groceries, <laughs> be able to use it at the restaurant, be able to do to, to, to handle a delivery, everything that people want to have, we can solve that problem with a QR code. And that's why we launched that product suite last year. So help me out here, a little background info just to get my head around this. So, you know, I'm of the mind that, you know, if I buy a 50 or a hundred dollar gift card to somebody, uh, that money goes to the retailer and, you know, some percentage of it is going to be spent. What are the, what are the industry metrics that you look at in those? So let's just use a hundred for round numbers. So if I, if I put the hundred dollars up, what percentage of that is going to get spent or does it lead to overspend? Like, oh, shoot, I'll spend 109 or something like that. What are, how does it all work out? Yeah, so it's a great question. And, and the answer is you, you nailed it at the very end there. It's average of $38 overspend. So when you're buying a gift card, you're having an average of $38 in overspend. So 
for the most part, people are not only utilizing 100% of their gift card, they're actually being able, and that's the value. That's the reason that we're seeing companies have revenues north of 4% of their company revenues in gift card. And the reason they want to go drive, and some of, by the way, best practices, they're seeing 8% plus of their revenues being generated by gift mm-hmm. card. And they want to participate and continue to proliferate that because not only are you getting that dollars, they're not looking for them not to use that product. They want them to use that product. And they want them to overspend on that product and come back and do it again and again. Yeah, get them in the house, get them in the door, get them on the site, and, and they Absolutely. will spend is the belief. And, and hence the, the discounting that we see going on with, with these cards so often because it's on the assumption that, hey, we'll play the numbers here. They're looking at that. And I think the community in general that are moving these products are looking to say, how do we incent those? By the way, now we're getting full circle. How do we give rewards and loyalty for giving the, for selling those products? How do we do fuel rewards and be able to use that, turn that, do the currency conversion, show a QR code, and now use the loyalty points as well as be able to digitize that gift card, put that in the wallet and utilize that, whether it's physical or digital. Yeah, so it's interesting, but so so even though you know the average spend is higher, there's still a lot. It's a lot of chips are left on the table, and that's what kind of what you guys are doing to to try to simplify this through the QR codes and you know your new uh, enterprise edition. I guess um, put this all together for me because you know we we kind of started with this unlocking currency idea as we head into the you know the fourth quarter, the busy holiday shopping season, back to school, just people want money. You know, big spending coming up. Uh, and I understand last year was like 80 plus percent growth in, in digital gift cards. So w- put that all together for me, Brad. How, what are you seeing this year? What's like the, the mood, the vibe with everything and all the uncertainty that we're uh, you know, seeing right now? This is an impossible question. I couldn't answer myself, but I'm going to put it on your table and let you take, <laughs> take a swing at it. Yeah, you know, I'll be happy to. Um, we're still trying to figure out what exactly the, the overall growth number is going to be. What we can tell you is that the growth coming out of COVID is staggering. We had plans, before, and by the way, and, we'll, and I'd like to talk about the enterprise edition of our digital gifting. Um, but, but before we go there, what we had was this concept of COVID and the pandemic. And the question was, you know, we knew that we were going to see this transference to digital. We knew we were going to see strong growth in digital well before the pandemic. And we started building products and solutions for that. I would say the pandemic concentrated and compressed the time frame to really be focused on digitization um, from maybe two years down to about three to six months. Um, our pipeline filled up uh, incredibly quickly and actually was, was the genesis for why we thought about the enterprise edition of our digital gifting experience, because companies were coming to us saying, hey, we, we can't just have a physical gift card solution. We need to be digitizing this. We have consumers who are going online. They want to have this. They want to move it inside their wallet. They want to be able to do things contactlessly. So everything that was happening, we want to be able to solve things that are in delivery. Um, because we want to be able to solve a, a curbside uh, pickup. So all of these concepts that we had have said, I'm going to go buy a gift card. And I'm going to go to the store and buy it. Don't get me wrong. That business is still growing and we're still thrilled with how that's performing, especially now that we're seeing this resurgence back into physical. Mm. But what has absolutely kicked off and continues to expand is our digital growth rate. So 80% uh, was the number. I think it's going to end up being triple digit. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see that continue to grow as we talk about the next six to 12 months. And we're trying to drive that. And, and, and that's kind of where that, that enterprise addition to how we're changing from just thinking about the big guys to driving it to small guys is focused. This is interesting. I like when you self-interview. It makes my job a lot easier, Brad. So <laughs> <laughs> talk to me about the enterprise addition. I mean, we recently reported that B2B gift cards are, are now greater than uh, the B2C variety that seems to be so um, you know, common. Yeah. So our, our enterprise, basically we were saying the same thing. We had this influx of folks that were calling saying we need digital. And previous to that, most of the large brands, and we support most of them, over 400 of them, and the largest gift card programs you can imagine Blackhawk supports. So whether you're buying a digital gift card from an individual website like Starbucks or Roblox or any of those, you're buying a, a digital gift card you're also being able to top those up and be able to put more money into it and create that ecosystem. And then the question was, could we take that solution and democratize it and bring it out to everybody? Because I guess our our local merchants need a digital gifting experience. 
our mid-sized markets. And what would happen is a lot of those were reserved because it took a while, it took IT, it took infrastructure. And so we were saying, how do we really take a solution utilizing our own platform, utilizing what we provide for the big guys, simplify it and be able to offer it up to the general, general markets and to the SMB space. And not only being able to do that one at a time, but go out to the marketplaces that are out there. How do we partner with some of the large you know, Shopify's and the Facebook marketplaces and the places where merchants reside and be able to offer up them to be able to go to their merchant community and be able to provide them a digital gifting solution where previously it just wasn't available to them. So this is the one we're, we're super excited about and we do see a huge amount of acceptance and, and we're seeing SMBs gonna really embrace this. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, you know, I'm hearing like um, employee retention, uh, that's like kind of the kind of the thing right now where it, it's just very, very clean, very easy. You know, the the um, the days of the water bottle are nice, but, you know, money is something nice about that, too. Yeah. And there's no doubt. Look, we're, we, we see this shift away from spot bonuses and cash and and credits and bonus, you know, that, that type of stuff. Like, let's move that into a, a gifting experience that's unique. Uh, let's give that to a closed loop card that mean it's meaningful and, and matters and something that you can pick that's something part of your everyday life or whether it's uh, by design an open loop card that you can use at a wider variety. So we're seeing employee incentives change, not only employee incentives, we're seeing the ability to look at vaccinations and how do we make sure that do we incent people to do vaccinations using our same suite of products and how do we think about you know, anywhere where checks uh, were previously being issued, can we simplify that and make it easier and make it more useful for the consumer in a way that they want to be able to do that? So, yeah, we're, we're looking at all of that spectrum. And you're kind of doing this in a closed platform, if I understand it, through, you know, with the marketing and promotion. So I get a, 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 um, a Blackhawk gift card, you know, I can go onto the platform and, and spend and shop there or into the actual Starbucks or you know, whatever else I can, you know, dream of. Yeah, we, we've created a proprietary network that brings really great distribution partners, tremendous 7,000 plus card partners that have come together in brands where we can support that network solution to purchase where you want, how you want, and then redeem back at the, at the partner's location. And again, with overspend. Yeah, which that's a nice thing. All right, yeah. so what's, I guess, just to wrap it up, what, what's, um, what do you think is the big story for 2021 uh, in the, you know, the gift card and the unlocking currency um, movement. Yeah, I think it's, it's, to me, it's going to be the combination of everything we chatted about. And it's really, I think the, we've talked about for years, this concept of omni-commerce, it's become a buzzword, but I think we are now approaching that desire to really get to a very unified omni-commerce solution. And, and be able to simplify that solution. So I think a couple of things. In physical, we're gonna see that marrying of digital being able to be used inside physical locations, no doubt about it. But I also think we're simplifying the digital solutions as well. You know, one tap shopping, we shouldn't be, it shouldn't take us five minutes to check out and fill out our address every time. Being able to do that very simplistically is where I think we're gonna see that value. And then being able to earn the same loyalty programs, whether it's online or in physical, is gonna make a ton of sense and be able to offer physical gift cards, digital gift cards. And then I think the last one I would, would play out is this concept of, of QR codes and where can we take it? So I talked about being able to use it for everyday spend, but imagine a world where I'm on, I'm pumping my gas and I can scan the QR code to buy a digital gift card or to some experience that I wanna be able to do, or I'm on the train or I'm at the airport. QR codes can now be presented and I can pick up that digital gift card on my way or I can utilize our partnership and our distribution differently. So I can do a QR code while I'm waiting for curbside delivery to fill to, to get my groceries, or I want to have it delivered to my home. All of those things are becoming seamless. So you truly have this omni-commerce solution. I think we're going to end up 21 is going to be the, the acceleration of that movement. Mm, interesting. Boy, I tell you, you know, I mean, the cell phone manufacturers have done a great job in terms of reading QR codes. I'm thinking that the that the Q, the other side of that business is going to have a, a, a real boom in the months yeah. to come. Those that, that sell the devices that um, can, you know, also scan your scan the barcode off your phone for, for merchants we, as well. We've seen the use case. I mean, we, we saw this during the pandemic. We, we, you know, there were many, many folks out there and, and I probably used it very infrequently. 
And now I use it almost on a daily basis. Um, and I think, you know, I'm not alone in that. And I'm starting to see more and more folks who look, how many times are we looking at menus on our phone now? I mean, it's, it's amazing. I think we'll continue to see that. And that opens up a host of opportunities. So yeah, I think we're going to see that proliferate. We're going to continue to drive it. Yeah, what, what is this thing you call menu? I'm not familiar with these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping, right? We, we, well, that's our, that's our wish. We hope this thing, we yeah. don't know where it's going. So lots of uncertainty. But, you know, hey, I appreciate your time. Uh, Brett uh, Narlinger, Global Head of Commerce at Black Hawk Network. Thanks uh, for the update on Unlocking Currency and let the unlocking begin. <laughs> thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Take care. Cheers. Bye now.